If you've ever searched YouTube for some Arduino projects, you've probably come across some projects where people have created a neat graphical functions for their LCD readouts. Things like horizontal bar charts, dials to show voltages, pressures, and other things. I too have an LCD readout and wanted to add some of those uh, neat graphical elements to my projects. But me, like most people, search for the web for some functions and things that people have written and I've never come across anything, so I decided to, uh, to write my own. So I've got uh, some code here that I'm going to give you for free. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'll give you a download link so you can draw a horizontal bar graph, a vertical bar graph, and a neat little dial to show various things that you're measuring with your Arduino. The LCD screen that I'm using comes from Adafruit. It's a 3.5 inch, 320 by 480 color display, and it even comes with touch screen screen capability. If you do buy this um, LCD, I highly recommend going to their website. They've got some excellent instructions that take you through it step by step. Also, they give you a link directly to their libraries, the Adafruit HX8357, which you must have, and the GFX library, uh, which you uh, have to have as well. All right, so let's take a look at our basic sketch here. So what I have got is a uh, very simple sketch that, um, that I wrote that I'm actually going to give to you. Here's how you initialize your Adafruit library. It's just one simple call to your include for your H file. And I've, I've got a bunch of defines here for different colors, but if you have your own colors, you're obviously more than welcome to use them. Just make sure you follow the naming conventions so there'll be a one-to-one -one map between your libraries and um, the code that I'm going to give you here. Typical defines to set up your, uh, your um, LCD, and here's the uh, data that you're going to get right from your, um, the Adafruit website that I just showed you a second ago. I've also got some dummy variables set up to measure some voltages. The code that you will have to add here, just a few lines here, you're going to have to track each one of your displays in this little graph under bar one. I've actually got seven displays going on my, um, in my code here, but I'm going to show you these one at a time. You're going to want to initialize that to true. The code will automatically set that to false. The reason I'm doing this here is uh, the code will draw the graph one time and not draw it ever again. That way you'll have less flickering in your actual display. And obviously the call to get the uh, touch screen to work is just a simple Adafruit call here. And uh, the object that I'm creating is TFT, that's my touch screen. And you're going to use this in the, uh, the actual code. In my setup, uh, I'll set my uh, begin, I'll fill the screen with black, and I'm going to set the rotation to 3 so we can see things nice and easily. And of course a pin mode, uh, A0. I just have a basic potentiometer across ground plus five going into A0 so I can dance my little graphs up and down from zero to, uh, to five volts. And of course in the loop, that's exactly how I'm getting that. I've got my analog read to A0, that's reading the binary, or I should say the bits for the volts, and then I convert the uh, bits to actual volts. And just to have a little fun, I'm actually um, offsetting that by two and a half volts to give you a plus or minus um, two and a half volts on the, uh, on the read. So we can have a little bit of fun with our displays here. So nothing really strange here that you have to do to get the display up and running. The real big thing here is just to set a, a couple of booleans for each one of your um, graphical uh, displays. So the three functions I'm going to give you is a draw bar chart vertical, draw bar chart horizontal, and a draw dial. So the argument list here is a little bit big, but I'm trying to make things nice and easy on um, you uh, maker type programmers like myself. So the first thing we do is we pass in the TFT, the object. This is for the, uh, the X offset, the Y offset, how thick, how wide do you want your bar chart, how high do you want your bar chart, and the range of values for your scale. I'm going to go to 0 to 1200. Now remember the, uh, the bits that I'm measuring here is going to be 0 to 2, 2 uh, to 123, or 1023. Uh, so I'm just going to make my scale to, uh, to 1200 to make things nice and pretty. And I'm going to go in 100 um, increments. And there's the data that I'm going to plot. And these next pieces of data here are simply going to tell me from um, four, to, uh, four, dec uh, four digits with zero decimal places of precision. I'm using a, a cheesy little format function that I wrote to help kind of clean up the format display here. And uh, what color do you want the uh, the bar? What color do you want the... The, the, uh, the other, the non-display part of the bar graph, the border, text, and the, uh, the background. And then what do you want your graph to say at the very bottom? And of course, here's my um, identifier for the graph, um, this particular object. So let's go ahead and make some changes here. Let me comment these out. And we'll uh, compile our code and uh, run it. And you can see how we just have the single um, 
bar chart drawn on our um, our screen. Now, if I want to play around with things a little bit, maybe I want to change the width. Let's go real crazy. How about 120 wide? Let's bring the height down a little bit to say 200 and 200. And uh, maybe we'll change this thing to yellow. And we'll get the, the void color to dark yellow. Or you could make it black if you wanted to. That's another handy color there. And when we compile that, you'll see we have a kind of a ugly color yellow display, but you can see how it gets a lot wider, a little bit shorter, but it still maintains that scale. So regardless of what your scale values are in the height of, of your uh, your display, I'm scaling the scale down to, to meet that um, uh, fit, your, fit your screen. All right, so you can play around with all kinds of things here. If you want to change uh, your void color to black, you could do that, just to give you an example of what that would look like. And when we recompile it, you'll see that you have a yellow bar chart with actually a black background there. So I've just given you a, just one more color option there to spice up your display just a little bit. All right, so that's the first function. That's the bar chart vertical. Now, what if you want to show things in a more of a horizontal nature? So let's go ahead and uncomment our horizontal one, and uh, we'll run it. This time I'm doing things a little bit differently here. I'm using the, uh, the plus or minus volts to show you that you can actually use a negative to positive scale. And you can see how it's drawn at the very bottom of the screen here that I've got, I go from minus two and a half volts uh, up to two. This is probably very good for uh, maybe some kind of a pressure gauge or, or something where the, the a level gauge where the uh, your level could go a little bit past, um, you know, higher or lower than some certain type of a set point. You can play with these options all day long. Uh, the first one is the X. I'll leave it where it is. Maybe the Y. Maybe let's change it to say, I don't know, 120. Let's change the uh, the width of this down to uh, 100. Make it real small. Change the, uh, the the height of it, maybe a little bit different. We'll leave all these um, these colors here. And when we compile this, you'll see all of the uh, the parameters update here. Now, I didn't do a lot of bounds checking in this this code here. So if you enter something crazy like um, you know 500,000 for your your X, it's not going to display. I'm not doing any kind of bounds checking here. So you're gonna have to be a little careful on uh, the data that you add. Last code that I'm going to give you is the infamous dial charts. This is a perfect thing for if you want to do a, a speedometer or just some kind of a fun looking um, radial gauge, if you will. So we'll compile this and you can see how we'll get a radial gauge in the, uh, the middle of the screen here. First argument is the offset for the, the center, I should say, for the X and for the Y gauge diameter. The values that you want to go from to 0 to 5 volts in half volt increments. And I want my, my uh, angle. Uh, my sweep angle to be 240 degrees, and I'm going to be measuring um, the volts. So I'm just going to use the uh, the Arduino uh, binary and convert that to actual volts there, and you can see that we get 0 to, to 5 volts. And of course, my infamous uh, cheesy formatting here, I want one digit, two decimal places, I want a red needle, I want a white background, um, and, uh, and black text. So we can change these things if we want to. We can change our, um, our display to maybe 80 for make it a little bit smaller. Maybe we want to go to, uh, how about just one for our increment for our volts and change the sweep angle to say, how about 140? Something a little bit different here. Compile that, you can see the results. We've got uh, a smaller dial, of course, and the sweep angle is much less. So it depends on how you want to display it. If you want to show something like um, your typical Oh, I don't know, oil pressure gauge in your car where it's got maybe a 90 degree sweep angle, you can see how it's a, a much less sweep angle. Or if you want to do something crazy like 260. Now, the one thing I found with this particular display here, and maybe it's just because I'm running in um, SPI mode, but there's a lot of flickering in the needle there. I haven't figured out how to fix that yet. But if any of you smart people know how to, uh, to um, fix that, please let me know. I'd love to um, update my display to make it a little bit faster. All right, so that's uh, the dial there. Now, if you want to do all three at one time, maybe you have a pressure and a voltage and a temperature or you know whatever, you can actually draw all three uh, dial gauges at the same time. So let's go ahead and change our code back. How about 260 for this one? And that's probably going to be good right there. Let me go ahead and run it and see. Now we're going to be drawing three uh, vertical bar charts all at the same time. So we'll have a yellow one, a red one, and a, uh, a green one. And you can see that as the, uh, the voltage goes up, obviously the, uh, the bit will go up from 0 to 1023. 
and the calculated volts and just my cute little offset just to kind of show you the, uh, the plus or minus scale there. Now, if you're wondering what happens if you rotate your display, uh, let's go ahead and do that. So let me change the uh, display to two and let's just reverse our X and Y. And um, the graph uh, or the, the dial updates as well. So obviously I'm not gonna rotate the camera around. Um, I will make you kind of turn your head to the side <laughs> and cough and that way you can see exactly what this display looks like. All right, so uh, if you're wondering what it looks like on a uh, white background, let's go ahead and change white on our fill and we'll change the dial to black. Could make it blue if you wanted to. And then the fill color. And then when we high all this thing, you'll see the um, sort of the inverse of the display. So you don't have to worry about writing any inverse functions or doing anything fancy. Just change the colors inside the actual dial. All right, so that's what I've given you guys. Uh, if you go to this link here, you can download this sketch and uh, you'll have these three functions and um, a cheesy little format function that I wrote at the, uh, at the very end. So if you don't remember all of these uh, parameters here, this argument list, I've got them fairly well documented in these comments here. So the vertical bar chart tells you you have to pass in the object name for your display, X position, Y position, the number of digits that you want for your formatting, the decimals, text color, background color, and even a redraw flag. All right, well, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoy these functions, and I really hope I see some neat Arduino projects on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to comment.